diabetes. So most of you are already aware what diabetes is. It is a very important and leading cause of many health issues. It is one of the major comorbidities that we see uh, in the patients every day. So we are going to talk about the diabetes, what diabetes is, uh, the prevalence of the disease and type of the diabetes, various treatments available and how to, you know, uh, take certain precautions to avoid diabetes, how to overcome it by with the help of diet or exercise. So let's begin. What is diabetes? Diabetes is a chronic, long-lasting health condition that affects how your body turns food into energy. So diabetes is sort of a condition in which uh, the uh, like the ability of body to convert the food into glucose and using it uh, for the uh, benefit of the body gets affected. So the body isn't available, uh, isn't you know uh, properly. Uh, can properly digest the glucose into cells so that glucose keep on circulating in the blood vessels and that lead to further complications. This chronic condition is called diabetes. So the next step, your body breaks down most of your food. You eat into sugar glucose and releases into your bloodstream. So whatever we eat, no matter either it's, uh, fats or either it is carbohydrates or other form of food we uh, intake, so our at the end product is glucose. So our body breaks down the most of food into glucose, then releases slowly into our bloodstream. When the blood sugar goes up, it signals your pancreas to release insulin. So pancreas is another body organ that responds to the levels of sugar in our blood. So once that pancreas uh, assess the sugar level in our blood, it secretes insulin in response to the glucose levels. So insulin acts like as a key to let the blood sugar into your body cells for use as energy. So insulin acts on different cells of our body and let glucose inside the cell so that the cell can use it for purpose of energy. So every food we take, it gets converted into glucose then it gets broken down and gets uh, and gives energy to our body. So in the very first step, every food gets digested. It uh, turns into glucose. Then uh, the our di 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 digestive uh, tract releases the uh, glucose in the bloodstream. And when the blood sugar goes up, pancreas releases insulin in its response. And insulin uh, makes the cells to uh, let in uh, like the sugar into the cells. So the cells have a micro, uh, little or small organelles that, you know, break down sugar in different processes. Either it is aerobic breakdown or anaerobic. Like uh, we, if, if you are already familiar of glycolysis or Krebs cycle, if you might, you know, read in biology. With diabetes, your body doesn't make enough insulin or can't use it as well as it should. So in case of diabetes, uh, our body is either, you know, uh, not producing sufficient uh, insulin or if sufficient insulin is getting secreted, but the cells are unable to use it. So they, uh, these both conditions can coexist. So when there is, isn't enough insulin or cells stop responding to insulin, too much blood sugar stays in our bloodstream. So over time, that can cause serious health problems such as heart disease, vision loss and kidney disease. These are long-term complications if a uh, uh, high level of sugar stays in our bloodstream. So the person, a person can uh, can suffer from heart disease, from a heart disease like heart attack or stroke and uh, vision loss like in several patients, retinopathy occurs. The retina of the eyes get damaged due to excessive glucose exposure. Then uh, there is also high significance that uh, patients get a kidney disease most likely chronic kidney disease so coming to the next part we have two types of diabetes type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes so in type 1 diabetes uh, this type is an autoimmune disease in which our, uh, our immune system attacks and destroys into in insulin producing cells in our pancreas for unknown reasons so the type 1 diabetes is sort of autoimmune disease in which uh, 
the you know our immune system gets sensitized to our own body cells our uh, the cells of uh, pancreas that release insulin so our, our immune system destroys the cells that produce insulin in the pancreas so they suffer from type 1 diabetes so up to 10% of the people have type uh, diabetes type 1 it is usually diagnosed in children and young adults but it can develop at any age so most likely in children and young adults type 1 diabetes occurs and 10% is its prevalence and why does it occur it occurs because uh, the body our immune system gets sensitized against its, our own cells of pancreas which release insulin so type 1 diabetes uh, this is a basic pathophysiology of type 1 diabetes next is type 2 diabetes so with this type uh, body doesn't make enough insulin or body cells don't respond normally to the insulin resistance so in two type 2 diabetes this is not autoimmune disease i it has two conditions basically in one the insulin isn't you know produced in sufficient amount so the body is able to utilize it wherever required in the uh, other condition body is producing adequate insulin but the cells are not responding to the insulin levels so what happens as a response this is the most common of type type 2 or type diabetes if the insulin uh, if there is high insulin in the circulation but cells are not responding to it or if our body is not producing sufficient insulin so as a result there is increased level of glucose in our circulation in our blood stream so if that persists for too long so they can uh, this condition can cause uh, kidney disease heart disease ne nephropathy and other sort of diseases that are quite you know uh, uh, that diagnose later in uh, age if the diabetes is left untreated so this is the most common of diabetes mostly uh, it uh, affects adults and uh, in the geriatric population as well but there is a uh, small prevalence that children can have this type of diabetes as well in uh, if we speak of type 2 diabetes uh, mostly most likely obese persons have type type 2 diabetes as well because if uh, the body fat percentage increases the resistance to in insulin is also increased so this way uh, overweight person persons can also suffer type 2 diabetes due to insulin resistance uh, in which like their body is producing adequate insulin but their cells are not responding to the insulin this is called insulin resistance so <clears throat> pre-diabetes so what is pre-diabetes it is a uh, pre means before diabetes means the diabetes so this uh, pre-diabetes is sort of a condition a situation just before the actual diabetes starts so this type is staged uh, before type 2 diabetes your blood glucose levels are higher than normal but not high enough to be officially diagnosed with type 2 diabetes so pre-diabetes is uh, like if, uh, we have uh, different stages uh, on uh, for the diagnosis of diabetes like stage 1 2 3 4 on the basis of glucose levels either fasting or either you know random or uh, by hba1c levels so there are different tests that uh, we uh, uh, use to assess the diabetes status of a person so pre-diabetes is a stage in which a person is about to get diabetic so next one is gestational diabetes so pre-diabetes is a condition before di diabetes two starts so pre-diabetic diabetic uh, these main uh, these are clinical terms used in hospitals like uh, to uh, categorize the patients so type 2 one uh, type 1 diabetes is 10 percent prevalent type 2 diabetes is most common and uh, there is also a uh, gestational diabetes Gestational diabetes means there is a diabetes that pair only uh, during the pregnancy in females. So uh, otherwise, other than the episode of uh, pregnancy, they are completely normal. But uh, so in some females, gestational diabetes appear. So this can develop. This type develops in some people during pregnancy. Gestational diabetes usually goes away after pregnancy. However, if you have gestational diabetes, you are at high risk of type developing type two diabetes later in life. So, in these kind of females uh, who uh, uh, suffer from gestational diabetes, usually they are not diabetic before pregnancy. But if they have 
gestational diabetes, there is high risk that they can develop type 2 diabetes in later stage of life. So this gestational diabetes affects in its own ways. Like uh, if we speak of the mother, di diabetes definitely going to affect her eyes, her kidneys or her cardiovascular system. But if we speak of the fetus, uh, the gestational diabetes affect the developing children as well, developing embryo or uh, if we call it infant or fetus. So gestational diabetes uh, like make the children overweight or uh, the uh, chorionic amniotic fluid is also gets excessive in amount. So there is a, a, a list of complications that are you know uh, related to the gestational diabetes. So if we speak of the prevalence in the US, total 38.4 million people have diabetes. So it makes almost 11.6 of the US population. It is a, a very significant number that a lot of people have diabetes. And this number is, is, isn't just constant, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, keep on increasing year by year. Mainly it is, uh, it can be our uh, diet or our lifestyle or uh, it, 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 can be due to uh, a lot of reasons there is also genetic predisposition for diabetes as well so uh, there is 38.4 million people ha total have diabetes That's estimated amount uh, um, estimated number of the people so it makes 11.6 percent of the u.s population uh, the cases that usually get diagnosed or treated are 29.7 million people including 29.4 million adults so usually uh, uh, a major fraction of the people who are suffering from diabetes, they uh, get diagnosed and get treated. But there is also people who doesn't get treated or uh, doesn't get diagnosed properly. So even if they get diagnosed, they doesn't, uh, you know, avail any sort of treatment or uh, any sort of anti-diabetic drugs. Uh, so they uh, undiagnosed or untreated diabetes can lead to serious complications in later stages of life if left untreated for years. So diagnosed people are 29.7 million people including 29.4 million uh, adults. So diabetes, are, uh, as I already told that diabetes type 2 is most common. So uh, this adult, this type of diabetes is mostly pronounced in, uh, in adults. And mostly uh, 29.4 out of 38.4 million people gets diagnosed. So undiagnosed people are 8.7 million people, 22.8% 22, 22 of adults are underdiagnosed or uh, sorry, undiagnosed. So if, uh, it is very important to talk about the prevalence uh, of the disease in certain geographical area because uh, in this way, we uh, you know assess the burden of the disease in that specific area. Uh, uh, your usual habits of the people or the way of lifestyle or their diet so uh, if uh, as a public health you know advocate i would highly uh, you know uh, i will i will always try to uh, include this kind of information in my lectures that talking about the prevalence is also uh, you know a major part of uh, disease if we talk about any disease if we speak of the prevalence in any area uh, this should be, you know, this information should be publicly uh, posted in newspapers or any other papers, research papers as well. So the general population should know that there is, uh, this number is significant and this is, this disease is quite prevalent. So they have to, you know, uh, modify their lifestyle or diet or, you know, uh, minimize their intake of alcohol or uh, reduce the smoking or any other habit that leads to any predisposition of diabetes so uh, total 97.6 million people aged 18 years or older have pre-diabetes 38 percent of the adult u.s population so these are the actual diabetic patients that get diagnosed or undiagnosed but there is also uh, a big number of people that you know that are pre-diabetic that can easily uh, get diabetes in any stage of life that are 97.6 million people uh, aged between 18 years and onwards uh, like in uh, to the population of geriatrics. So there is 38% of the adult po US population that is pre-diabetic, means they can develop diabetes in any stage of life. They are, you know, near to the threshold of developing diabetes. So 
65 years or older 27.2 million people aged 65 years or older 48 uh, 40.48.8 40. have pre-diabetes so if a person reaches 65 years uh, then if he or she doesn't already have uh, diabetes in their whole life but there is a high chance they have pre-diabetes or can develop diabetes in their uh, like later stages of life like 60s 70s or 80s because our body uh, uh, in our body wear and tear starts due to aging so uh, our organs doesn't produce that much insulin uh, so that uh, this age group can suffer from diabetes as well so this one is a trend in age adjusted prevalence of diagnosed diabetes undiagnosed diabetes and total diabetes among uh, adults aged 18 years and older in the US and this study was you know uh, carried out between 2001 and 2020 so uh, <clears throat> these graph shows the trends of uh, like trends of diabetes uh, almost of uh, 20 years so this is the uh, time period the uh, actual you know there is segments of 2001 to 4 uh, 5 to 8, 9 to 12, 13 to 16, 17 through 20. So this uh, is the eight adjusted uh, percentage. So uh, if we uh, talk about the uh, age, uh, <clears throat> if we talk about the age percentage, uh, like if we speak of the children uh, under uh, age of four, there is, a, you know, uh, there is a, almost a constant number of the undiagnosed diabetes uh, that are uh, increasing over the years after 2016 so this graph tends to go up this way slightly up. so our undiagnosed diabetes are also increasing in under four under eight there are di uh, diagnosed diabetes cases that are also raising so uh, this percentage shows the age groups or uh, like in different age groups either they are di diagnosed uh, diabetes undiagnosed diabetes total diabetes so this graph shows age-wise and uh, time-wise trends and distribution of diabetes. If we speak of the symptoms of di uh, diabetes, there are frequent urination, we call it polyuria. There is blurry vision, increased hunger, feeling of pins and needle in the feet, all, also a sort of tingling sensation, excessive thirst, we call it polydipsia, extreme fatigue, weight loss these all are significant like uh, symptoms of uh, diabetes uh, some people like uh, can have can experience one or two symptoms some can experience all of them some experience like one of them so it varies person to person so general uh, symptoms of diabetes are urinate pee a lot often at night are very thirsty lose weight without trying are very hungry have blurry vision have numb or tingling hands or feet, feels very tired, have very dry skin, have sores that heal slowly, have more infections than usual. So these are the general symptoms of diabetes. The last one is also significant, having more infections than usual. So in uh, if we speak of immunocompromised persons or children, if they have diabetes, they are more prone to chest infections as well as UTIs uh, in adults as well. So... <clears throat> Uh, we are going to talk about type 1 diabetes in detail. So if you have type 1 diabetes, your pancreas doesn't make insulin or makes very little insulin. So insulin helps blood sugar enter the cells in the body for the use as energy. So insulin is basically uh, the key to the growth of the cell that lets in the glucose. So uh, if uh, I try to explain it scientifically or biologically, uh, there is a cell like uh, around self let's uh, consider this rectangular picture as a cell and let's this is this one is a receptor there is a circulating sugar so if uh, th this one is hormone uh, like insulin if insulin binds to this entrance of the cell this entrance gets opened so the blood sugar gets inside of the cell so the cells can utilize the sugar and you know get energy of the glucose. I hope that makes sense. So in type one diabetes, their uh, pancreas doesn't make sufficient insulin 
it is due to uh, autoimmune uh, any autoimmune uh, condition so high blood sugar is damaging to a body and cause many of symptoms and complications of diabetes so either type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes they uh, cause similar complications like retinopathy uh, eyesight issues uh, if i speak of the renal issues it calls it causes nephropathy it can cause tingling sensation we call it neuropathy so these are various complications that uh, can be due to type 1 or type 2 diabetes there is uh, you know uh, only their uh, pathophysiology is different the way they uh, like they reduce the amount of insulin uh, acting on the cells but overall their effects are same either uh, if we speak about type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes they cause similar symptoms so type 1 diabetes uh, was once called insulin dependent or juvenile diabetes but it can develop at any age uh, initially type 1 diabetes was con was considered as uh, diabetes of uh, like insulin dependent or juvenile diabetes that used to occur in children but later studies suggest that at, it can develop at any age so what are uh, what uh, causes type 1 diabetes so type 1 diabetes caused to be uh, to be uh, thought to be caused by autoimmune re uh, reaction the body attacks itself by mistake so the reaction destroys the cell in the pancreas that make insulin that are called beta cells beta cells of the pancreas uh, secrete insulin so in autoimmune reaction our body kills the beta cells of pancreas that were uh, that were producing insulin but these cells gets destroyed by the immune reaction so there is no more insulin that leads to type 1 di diabetes so this process can go on for months unless uh, like there is significant drop in the insulin and the symptoms uh, appear, get appeared so other possible causes include genetics there is also a fair share of genetics that uh, diabetes run in families there is genetic predisposition of type 1 type 1 diabetes as well like in case of genetic predisposition, either they are all uh, uh, dysfunctional beta cells or two, uh, two less functional beta cells. So exposure to viruses and other environmental factors are also a possible cause of type 1 diabetes. In case of, if we speak of the viruses or other uh, chemical exposure, any other form, like they, they destroyed beta cells, they, get, they destroy the beta cells. So in either way, they are destroying the beta cells that lead to decreased production of insulin and that leads to hyper uh, uh, hyperglycemia in our blood glucose uh, in our bloodstream hyperglycemia means increased blood sugar in our uh, body so the symptoms of type 1 diabetes uh, have like depends on as it uh, like have a sudden onset or it goes on for years so type 1 diabetes is often characterized by a swift and unexpected onset of symptoms. Individuals may experience rapid and noticeable shift in their overall well-being. Their sudden onset is particularly distant with symptoms manifesting quickly, requiring prompt medical attention for diagnosis and management. So cutting it short, like in sudden onset, the person, you know, gets sick all of a sudden and he usually, he or she feels like uh, usually... Uh, have a feeling of like malaise or being sick uh, there is fatigue then if uh, the disease gets advanced there is polydipsia and polyuria uh, uh, the patient gets hungry uh, the patient gets usually uh, very thirsty the patient starts to uh, pee a lot so these are different symptoms weight loss one of the hallmark symptoms of type 1 diabetes is unexplained weight loss the body unable to utilize glucose effectively due to a lack of insulin begins to break down fat and muscles, uh, muscle for the energy. So what happens in type 1 diabetes, there is uh, a, a, a too little amount of insulin available. So the body is not uh, able to use the glucose for energy. So what it does as a compensation, it begins uh, like to, to break down fat of the body and the muscle uh, part of the body for energy via different ways. So if we speak of getting energy from carbohydrates its metabolic breakdown or pathway is different if we speak of breaking down fats and muscles for energy so in, due to lack of glucose uh, lack of insulin the glucose uh, uh, the uh, the carbohydrate breakdown pathway gets like uh, if if i would say like 
the pathway doesn't go on any further due to lack of insulin so the carbohydrates doesn't get uh, like even if they uh, get broke down in the form of glucose but the glucose uh, isn't utilizable by the cells so the body tends to uh, like adopt other ways like breaking down fats in muscles for the energy via different pathways so the metabolic process results in uh, weight loss despite maintain or increase food intake so this is uh, one of the red flag symptoms of the di one diabetes that the patient loses weight uh, even without trying and even uh, even they are taking uh, adequate food intake so recognizing the combination of sudden onset and unexplained weight loss is crucial for early detection and timely intervention for type 1 diabetes so uh, this was mainly uh, about uh, type 1 diabetes so now we we'll talk about the risk factors of type 1 diabetes. So some factors that can raise your uh, risk for type 1 diabetes include if you have family history, if you have genetics, like there is, uh, if you have certain genes that increase the risk of uh, developing type 1 diabetes, if you belong to a certain geographical area that, you know, uh, where people uh, have uh, prevalent diabetes, like if you travel away, from the equator, there is a uh, certain changes in the metabolism that can lead to diabetes. Uh, in age factor is also very important. Type 1 diabetes can appear at any age, but uh, it appears at two noticeable peaks. The first peak occurs in children between 4 to 7, and the second is in children between 10 to 14 years old. So if there is diabetes between this age bracket and this age bracket, we can automatically assume that is type 1 diabetes. So there is complications of type 1 diabetes that include uh, being sh shaky overall, being too sweaty, being dizzy, having confusion and difficulty speaking, hungry, too hungry, weak or tired, having frequent headaches, being nervous or upset. So there is a combination of symptoms accompanied by the history, uh, history of the weight loss as well as the history of uh, these sudden symptoms uh, like can lead to the accurate diagnosis of type 1 diabetes so uh, type 1 diabetes leads to uh, can leads to uh, hypoglycemia so uh, it is it can be caused by too much insulin this can occur if we you know uh, if we start treating a patient having diabetes and if we give too much insulin to the patient that uh, that is producing too little, so all of a sudden blood sugar drops that causes a condition that is called hypoglycemia. So waiting too long for a meal or snack that can also lead to this. Not eating enough can also cause hypoglycemia. Can also cause hypoglycemia. Getting extra physical activity can also uh, cause a deficit uh, glucose deficit condition of our body that can lead to hypoglycemia. So symptoms of low blood sugar can in, uh, include fast heartbeat, shaking, sweating, nervousness, irritability, dizziness, and hunger and fainting as well. So uh, this one is uh, a bit advanced complication of type 1 diabetes. diabetes. I will try to make it simple and short. So diabetic ketoacidosis is a severe condition that is related to diabetes. Uh, it is a life-threatening and uh, what exactly happens in it uh, that the, there are more uh, there are two common causes are illness and missing uh, sorry diabetic ketoacidosis is like very high blood sugar and low insulin levels that lead to diabetic ketoacidosis so there is a very high blood sugar low very low insulin that what happens if it sustains uh, it leads to the acidosis, increasing the amount of acid in our circulation or decreasing the pH of the body. So the most common causes are illness, either due to any disease or due to any uh, missing insulin shots. So the signs and symptoms of DKA or diabetic ketoacidosis are being very thirsty, urinating a lot more than usual, and if left untreated, can lead to fast, deep breathing. Dry skin and mouth, flushed face, fruity smelling breath, headache, muscle stiffness, or head uh, or itches. So it uh, some some of symptoms I I forgot to include that are uh, like stomach pain or vomiting. So it can all if 
still left untreated it can lead to coma and you know even death so initial warning signs of ketoacidosis from the diabetes are thirst high ketone levels in the urine uh, like uh, frequent urination uh, and like fruit with a fruity smell that are due to uh, presence of ketones ketones are also a sort of byproduct of carbohydrate metabolism uh, if uh, carbohydrates gets uh, like broken or uh, metabolized uh, inadequately or not properly then ketones are formed uh, very dry mouth is also warning sign of ketoacidosis frequent urination spike blood sugar so these all also are signs and symptoms of diabetic ketoacidosis this is one of the serious complications of diabetes next we talk about type 2 diabetes about 38 million americans have diabetes about 1 in 10 approximately 9 to 95% of them have type 2 diabetes as i already told type 2 diabetes is a major disease of like uh, adults only so 1 in 10 people have type 2 diabetes or either they are pre diabetic or either they are diagnosed or undiagnosed so type 2 diabetes most oftenly develop in people over age 45 but more and more children teens and young adults are also developing it these days this is due to lifestyle due to our uh, diet or uh, other environmental factors as well so how we differentiate between type 1 and type 2 diabetes so in type 1 diabetes it cannot be prevented or cured like we can only uh, give the symptomatic treatment but we cannot cure it completely the body doesn't create enough insulin and in, uh, it is also a type 1 characteristic causes are unknown but genetics may play a role requires insulin injections for whole life so what happens in type 2 diabetes can be prevented through lifestyle modifications the body doesn't create uh, enough insulin or develops insulin resistance the causes include genetics aging inactivity obesity and more requires insulin as needed injection or oral so type 2 type 2 diabetes uh, doesn't have necessarily to be like lifetime but it can be uh, controlled through medicines uh, for a limited time or lifetime or can be uh, prevented through lifestyle modifications so what is common between these two can cause serious health problems and complications requires a healthy lifestyle and medical supervision symptoms include thirst frequent urination and blurry vision so symptoms are almost like uh, very common between type 1 and type 2 diabetes so it is very important to take adequate history uh, in checking the regular levels of insulin uh, and the bsr levels of the patient hba1c etc these tests can use to like differentiate between type 1 and type 2 diabetes so type 1 diabetes uh, how it is caused like insulin is a hormone as already told made by uh, pancreas beta cells of the pancreas that acts like a key to let blood sugar into the cells in your body for use as energy so if you have like type 2 diabetes the cells don't respond normally to insulin this is called insulin resistance it means your body already has a significant like uh, adequate amount of insulin circulating in the blood but what happened uh, the cells are not responding to insulin this condition is called insulin resistance in this kind of, uh, kind of situation there is significant uh, there is uh, like adequate insulin but there is also elevated sugar levels in the body so uh, this is mainly uh, an issue of obesity or uh, like other certain situations that leads insulin resistance and it can be easily cured like uh, by reducing weight or uh, by lifestyle modifications so your pancreas makes more insulin to try to sell, uh, get cell respond so what happened exactly like there is insulin resistance cells are not responding to the insulin uh, the body thinks that the insulin levels are low so in that case a feedback starts and the body starts producing more and more insulin but as you know uh, the cells are not responding so this feedback uh, loop goes on on uh, and on unless the, uh, the pancreas can't keep up and it gets like uh, exhausted and your blood sugar rises setting the stage for pre diabetes and type 2 diabetes so in early stage of type 2 diabetes if we speak of insulin resistance there is adequate insulin then there is uh, let me explain with a graph
तो दिस साइड इज इंसुलिन दिस साइड इज ग्लूकोज लेवल्स if we speak of like glucose levels they are like increasing this way but if we uh, this is the line for the glucose if uh, we draw a line for the, uh, from uh, for insulin initially the insulin adequate like if, if there is a like 0.5 millimole per uh, liter of the blood we say that this one is a normal amount of the insulin so in uh, initially the insulin levels are normal but Uh, the cells doesn't respond what happens the body thinks that insulin is not producing like is produced uh, in low amounts the body starts producing more and more insulin and what happens next the body uh, the beta cells of pancreas gets exhausted and they do not produce insulin anymore so in this case the insulin levels drops again so this condition sets like situation for pre diabetes or diabetic like type 2 diabetes so in diabetes diabetes type 2 there is initially uh, normal levels of insulin then there are raised levels of insulin and there then there is a decline in the insulin levels so this sets the stage for uh, pre diabetes that leads to diabetes uh, type 2 so what's the treatment for type 2 diabetes in this kind of situation uh, if the patient reaches uh, this uh, this threshold like type 2 diabetes uh, at this point where the insulin uh, is uh, uh, release is too low and the cells are exhausted the beta cells of uh, pancreas are exhausted in this situation uh, the uh, insulin in the form of shots or oral uh, intake of drugs are advised but if in early stages then it is as why advised like to uh, the patient to uh, do some lifestyle modifications so uh, the insulin resistance goes away and the patient uh, glucose levels return to normal so that person doesn't have to go through like diabetes or process of diabetes so what happens in type 2 diabetes let me summarize in type in type 2 diabetes initially there is a uh, adequate level of insulin and the blood glucose level are high but as a uh, due to feedback mechanism body starts producing more and more insulin uh, but it doesn't uh, but the body cells doesn't respond to this high level eventually what happens the beta cells of pancreas get exhausted and they no longer able to produce insulin and this sets the stage for pre diabetes and pre diabetes if not treated then leads to diabetes type 2 so if in this stage of reduced insulin there is uh, it gets compulsory to uh, uh, you know uh, to intake or uh, to get shots for uh, from external insulin to uh, reduce the blood glucose level but if uh, it is in early stages uh, this can be treated without any use of external drug or anti diabetic drugs with the help of di uh, lifestyle modifications reducing weight or maintaining weight within a normal bmi and like uh, to uh, start Uh, having cardio daily or reducing inactivity like if the person stays in bed for too long or having too sedentary lifestyle they have to modify it so the symptoms of type 2 diabetes uh, it is usually have uh, gradual onset main uh, symptoms are fatigue and blurred vision in later stages so type 2 diabetes often develop gradually with symptoms evolving over extended period so <clears throat> individuals may not able to identify like any uh, or note any subtle changes in their lifestyle because it is very gradual and the patients doesn't usually are aware of that unless there is any sort of complication or significant symptoms and signs next uh, is fatigue persistent fatigue is a very common symptom of type 2 diabetes body cells resistant to insulin effect struggle to efficiently convert glucose into energy this inefficiently uh, its inefficiency leads to sense of tiredness and fatigue impacting daily life activities and overall quality of life so uh, this is uh, you know uh, it is imperative that if there is uh, high blood glucose levels but they are not entering into the cell the cells gets too little glucose and they are able to uh, convert 
a very little amount of glucose into energy. So this makes sense that the person feels too fatigued or tired. So next one is blood vision. Blood vision can be a lean indicator of type 2 diabetes. Elevated blood sugar levels can affect the lenses in the eyes leading to temporary changes in the vision. So uh, this is a very early change in the type 2 diabetes. If we speak of the complications of the diabetes, there is a whole like topic or details on diabetic retinopathy. This is a very uh, like uh, prevalent disease of the eye in the diabetic patients that the patient's lenses gets uh, like opacified or the patient's retina gets damaged due to the diabetes. Uh, some patients develop glaucoma or like cataracts due to diabetes as well. So the risk factors for type 2 diabetes are having pre-diabetic conditions. Uh, if you are overweight, if you are 45 years or older, then you are at risk. I have a parent, brother, sister with type 2 diabetes. So there is also genetic predisposition as well. If you are physically active less than 3 minutes a week. So it means if you are comatose or if you are like too obese to move or so this sets uh, uh, like ground for the diabetes type. Have I ever had di uh, gestational diabetes, diabetes during pregnancy or given birth to a baby who weighed over nine pounds. So if you have ever gestational diabetes that uh, then you are all also at risk of type two diabetes. So uh, if you're not aware that you had gestational diabetes, but you are you have given uh, birth to a baby who weighed over nine pounds, it means you had gestational diabetes, but you were unaware of that or it was undiagnosed because overweight babies are mostly born to the women who have gestational diabetes. Uh, gestational diabetes usually uh, is benign, but if the sugar levels are too high, then it, uh, it should definitely get... Uh, uh, should be treated uh, but uh, usually it is uh, harmless or it stays uh, undiagnosed so uh, um, if you are an african american hispanic or latino american indian or alaska native person so there is also a disposition uh, that is showed by some studies so some pacific islanders and asian american people are also at high risk so uh, I don't know about the mechanism, how the geographical like areas affect uh, the prevalence of the disease, but the studies shows that it is you know uh, prevalent in these populations. If you have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, you may also be at risk for type 2 diabetes. So uh, if we speak of the fatty liver disease, there are two types of fatty liver disease. One is alcoholic and the other is non-alcoholic. In non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, uh, like people are also at uh, risk of developing type 2 diabetes. So what is gestational diabetes? It is a type of diabetes that developed during pregnancy in women who doesn't uh, who don't already have diabetes. Every year 2 to 10 percent of pregnancies in US are affected by gestational diabetes. So managing gestational diabetes will help make sure you have healthy pregnancy and healthy baby. So if uh, ladies uh, like if uh, any pregnant woman have gestational diabetes uh, like uh, and they uh, they get is that they get diagnosed. They get like their sugar levels uh, checked regularly. So if there is uh, significantly high uh, circulating sugar, then they should get treatment for it. But there, if there is like a slight increase in the diabetes or slight increase in the sugar levels of the body uh, in their bloodstream, so it can be like harmless or need not to take any sort of medicines. But in gestational uh, diabetes, uh, usually. Uh, high weight babies are born because due to increasing increased sugar levels, uh, they take excessive like glucose and they grow bigger than the usual babies. So what causes gestational diabetes? So during pregnancy, our body makes more hormones and go through some changes such as weight gain. So this way our body uh, either uh, has a decrease insulin level or develop insulin resistance due to the weight uh, gain the insulin uh, even if the insulin levels are normal but the cells if develop insulin resistance during pregnancy this can lead to gestational diabetes so insulin resistance increases your body's need for insulin so uh, as i already explained this in the graph that if the patient has insulin resistance initially the body uh, if insulin is uh, normal insulin level is normal but 
the body senses as it has uh, it is producing low insulin so in that response body starts producing more and more insulin uh, the levels goes up but it doesn't make any change unless uh, the beta cells gets exhausted and the insulin level drops uh, even below the normal level so then uh, it says pre diabetic or diabetic stage so all pregnant women have some insulin resistance during late pregnancy however some women have insulin resistance ever, even before they get pregnant so uh, even if they have insulin resistance before they pregnant it means they either they are overweight or either they have genetic predisposition or <clears throat> either they are pre diabetic already so they start pregnancy with increased need for insulin and more likely to have gestational diabetes so uh, females who already have if they already have diabetes or if they are already pre diabetic or they have any risk factor for diabetes uh, their pregnancy can go under the category of high risk pregnancy as well so the risk factors are for the gestational diabetes are uh, if you have gestational diabetes during previous pregnancy then it is likely that you will uh, have diabetes in your next pregnancy as well if you have given a baby who is like who weighed over 9 pounds it means your baby was overweight and you had gestational diabetes but it was undiagnosed but this marker this uh, like we can anticipate this way that the uh, woman was uh, was having gestational diabetes during pregnancy if you are overweight then you uh, also have a risk for gestational diabetes if you are more than 25 years old if your family history of type 2 diabetes if you have any hormonal disorder such as pcos if you are african american hispanic american indian alaska native uh, native hawaiian or pacific islander person so these uh, this geographic predisposition doesn't mean that you must have this disease but there are there is a slight risk that uh, you tend to get this disease uh, more than other people that uh, are not born that do not live in this area or do not have this lifestyle or have family history so complication in the babies that are born to diabetic mothers they uh, are excessively grown like uh, they receive extra glucose so uh, the extra glucose triggers the baby pancreas to make an extra insulin this can cause your baby to grow too large it can lead to difficult birth and sometime need for c section so uh, it is high likely that if you uh, have scheduled a normal delivery or vaginal delivery but if due to if you are diabetic and your baby uh, in the third trimester has grown too much it can lead to like a very difficult birth to the labor uh, and it definitely requires c section because the baby gets too bigger so blood sugar, low blood sugar it is also uh, a complication of uh, the baby is born to diabetic mothers sometimes baby of mothers with gestational diabetes develop low blood sugar shortly after birth it is because their own insulin production is high so in response to the high circulating sugar of the mother uh, the fetus uh, starts secreting more and more insulin and immediately after the birth the that circulation from the mother to fetus uh, gets like broke broken down so in this way uh, but their insulin production is still high this can lead to uh, gestational diabetes with low blood sugar in the fetus sorry type 1 type 2 diabetes later in life babies of the mothers who have gestational diabetes have a higher risk for developing obesity and type 2 diabetes later in life so this sets a genetic sort of predisposition in the patients like their babies can have type 2 diabetes in their later stages as well so another serious complication of uh, babies born to diabetic mothers can be there is a uh, baby uh, there can be a, a baby deaths uh, before or shortly after birth due to hypoglycemia severe hypoglycemia uh, if their mother has diabetic or has been diabetes for too long and it was untreated the sugar levels were too high uh, in that response body uh, baby's body was producing more insulin but immediately after birth the glucose levels weren't that much high so the insulin level were too high so the baby gets hypoglycemia its brain gets hypoglycemia so it can lead to death immediately after birth 
and if uh, uh, in case of baby's death before birth it can be due to the iugr iugr means uh, uh, intrauterine uh, decrease growth rate so long term complications of diabetes include hardened blood vessels disease so di diabetes major majorly increase the risk of many heart problems this can include coronary heart disease with chest pain heart attack stroke and narrowing of arteries atherosclerosis so if there is like prolonged high level of uh, circulating blood sugar in our body it can definitely bring some uh, uh, hazardous effects on our body like atherosclerosis is one of the major uh, long term uh, complication of diabetes in this the patients might have like stroke or heart attack or chest pain so uh, this disease uh, if, if this long standing disease can lead to a cardiovascular system collapse due to these issues like by developing angina heart attack stroke or atherosclerosis so there is a nerve damage from diabetes uh, diabetes uh, too much sugar can also like disrupt the blood vessels supplying the nerves especially in the le uh, legs in our like limbs uh, in our hands tip of the toes or tip of the fingers so this can lead to tingling numbness burning or pain that usually begins at the tips of the toes or fingers and gradually spreads upward so this condition is called neuropathy and it is a major complication of long standing diabetes so uh, neuropathy as well as there is nephropathy which means the uh, destruction of kidney cells due to diabetes as well as there are also other complication as well if like there are vascular changes in the patient's uh, limbs which can lead to amputation uh, if there are unhealing wounds or like the wounds that never heal so they have to amputate the patient's limbs as well if there is vascular issues in the area as i said kidney damage from diabetes uh, the kidneys hold millions of tiny blood vessels uh, which we call glomeruli that filter waste from the blood so the diabetes can damage delicate this uh, fil filtering system so these uh, cl uh, clustered blood vessels are called glomerulus and diabetes uh, like uh, uh, damages these vessels which can lead to uh, like protein in the urea which is called protein urea because if the these blood vessels gets damaged uh, the proteins from the blood uh, vessels leak into the urine so it is one of the markers as well the protein urea so eye damage from diabetes which is called diabetic retinopathy in which retina of the eye gets damaged so that can lead to blindness there is foot damage nerve damage of the foot or poor blood flow to the feet increases risk for many foot complications one of which is gangrene or death of the tissue of the feet so this can lead to amputation skin and mouth condition diabetes may have more prone to skin problems including bacterial and fungal infections such as candida infections uh, uh, can like most commonly uh, that, that can be seen in oral cavity as well as vagina in case of females so hearing impairment as well hearing problems are more common in people with diabetes in which the like our uh, middle area uh, ear portion that deals with the hearing gets also damaged due to diabetes or prolonged sugar level high sugar levels so how we get tested like which tests are uh, that can like uh, help us diagnose the diabetes so a1c test the a1c test means your blood sugar level or over past two or three months so this like gives up a, a brief statement of blood sugar level which have been in our two to three months of recent history so a1 test c uh, below 5.7 is normal so this this uh, these are the ranges so 5.7 percent is normal five between five to seven uh, five point seven to six point four indicates that you have pre-diabetes and if you have a level 6.5% or higher than it means you have diabetes so this test indicates how your blood sugar levels have been uh, during your recent past 2 3 months and the next one is fasting blood sugar test it means uh, you uh, this measures your blood sugar after you had uh, like had an overnight fast not eating and the fast fasting blood sugar level of 99 mg per deciliter or lower is normal 
but if uh, like the fasting blood sugar level is 100 to 125 it indicates that you have pre diabetes and if you have 126 or more uh, in case of fasting blood sugar then you have definitely have diabetes this is fasting blood sugar test that we uh, like do early in the morning uh, without having breakfast and this uh, test shows the like uh, value of the sugar instantly in the blood and this test shows a history of blood sugar during your th two three months there is a glucose tolerance test uh, this means your blood sugar before and after you drink a liquid that contains glucose this is uh, not indicated usually and in case of complicated issues mm -hmm. so there is also random blood sugar test in previously we have studied fasting blood sugar test and there is random blood sugar test in which like you, uh, we measure your blood sugar at any time. Like either you are you had a meal or you haven't had a meal. So a blood sugar level of two hundred milligram per deciliter or higher indicates you have diabetes. It is a random in case. So what have we learned so far? In a case of AIC, below a uh, five point seven is normal. Between five point seven and six point four is pre-diabetic, and six point four or higher indicates you have diabetes. So uh. In case of fasting blood sugar uh, level, 99 or lower is normal. 100 to 125 is pre-diabetic and 126 or more is diabetic. So in case of random blood sugar test, if you have a blood sugar of 200 milligram per deciliter, then it, it shows that you definitely have diabetes. So this table shows a different uh, blood tests uh, that shows diabetes, pre-diabetes and normal values. So what is the management and treatment of the diabetes? One of the major uh, management is blood sugar monitoring regularly. Then next one is diet, then exercise, then oral diabetic medication, then insulin. So these are in, uh, indicated in the early stages. So the diabetes resolves on its own, especially type 1 diabetes, sorry, type 2 diabetes. So blood sugar monitoring is very important, like how your uh, either your treatment plan is working either your diet plan is working, either your exercise is working or not. So uh, it is very easy to check, like if you have a continuous glucose monitor or if you can have a portable glucose meter in which uh, you have to like give a slight prick in your finger, uh, you can have a blood uh, drop on your finger, then put it on uh, like uh, the glucose meter strip and the, it, it can show you instant blood sugar level. The next one is diet. Meal planning and choosing healthy life for your key aspects of diabetes management, in which like uh, low carbs are indicated. Uh, eating more healthy habits can lead to uh, better management of diabetes. Like uh, in case of diabetic patients, we recommend that uh, they should uh, definitely uh, reduce their carb intake or their sugar intake, and uh, they are you know. Uh, highly encouraged to take more like a balanced diet, more protein, uh, like a balance or uh, adequate fats or uh, eat more vegetables or fresh salads, etc. This like uh, this way they can easily manage their weight and they can reduce their heart disease risk. So exercise, physical activity increases insulin sensitivity. This is very important and, uh, you know, uh, aspect of the management that in case of type 2 diabetes, if the patients have insulin resistant, if, if they are obese or are overweight or have even ha have gestational diabetes, if they exercise properly, they do uh, like cardio regularly, this uh, exercise or, uh, or any cardio increases the demand for glucose in the body and that leads to increased insulin level as well as well as the in increased insulin sensitivity. So exercise has direct link to increase insulin sensitivity. It means it can reduce insulin resistance. So the regular exercise is very important for the management of diabetes, especially type two diabetes. So uh, if we speak of oral diabetic medicines, they are uh, really recommended that uh, like uh, that are chronically uh, affected by the diabetes and they are they have been ill managed throughout their life. And uh, they haven't like uh, they had poor compliance toward the treatment, so uh, they uh, recommended to have regular to have regularly intake these medications. So, uh, oral diabetes medications help manage blood sugar levels in people who have diabetes. 
but still produce some levels of insulin, mainly people by type 2 diabetes and pre-diabetes. So people with gestational diabetes may also need oral medication if the glucose level are too high. So there are different type of medications uh, amongst metformin is the most common, uh, commonly prescribed drug. So uh, depending on the situation, uh, the medications are recommended. Let me check. So the, uh, if we have enhanced insulin secretion, then K channel blockers are recommended. They are potassium channel blockers. And if uh, anyone has uh, insulin resistance, then we give a different group of drugs that are uh, like metformin, bioglatazone. So this uh, this is another class of, and then there is, uh, if there is a mixed symptoms or if they have mixed sort of disease, then there are a list of other drugs that can be given. So it is very important to, uh, you know, uh, to, to actively manage diabetes, especially in early stages. So as I already talked that in early stages that blood diabetes can also uh, like can be man easily managed by blood uh, by uh, taking adequate diet or doing exercise regularly and doing uh, cardio regularly. So in case of uh, early diabetes, the main goal is to, you know, uh, minimize the use of medicines and uh, to cure the disease with the help of like palliative or uh, like uh, choosing healthy diets, uh, lifestyle or choosing uh, any uh, without choosing any medi medication. So in advanced disease or if a pe uh, people are having like uh, complications of the disease or if uh, the females having gestational diabetes have too much like uh, circulating glucose levels. So uh, it means that uh, she should definitely have treatment. So metformin is also uh, prescribed to the pregnant females as well. So the next one is insulin. It, uh, it is a most commonly given drug in the people of diabetes. Insulin is given in the form of shots uh, with different like dosages depending on the sugar levels patients usually have. So uh, there are different types of synth synthetic insulin. They each start to work at different speeds and uh, last in body for different lengths of time. So either if the patient has like too uh, severe hyperglycemia or circulating too much sugar and needs acute management or uh, like emergency um, uh, management, then the quick acting insulin is given. Meanwhile, for the maintenance purpose or the patients with having like uh, chronic, chronically uh, uh, elevated levels of insulin, then the slow releasing insulin is also given or insulin shots are prescribed over different periods of time. So the four main ways you can take insulin include injectable insulin with a syringe, which is also called short insulin pens, insulin pumps and rapid action uh, acting inhaled insulin is also available. So we have talked about type 1 diabetes so far, type 2 diabetes and the risk factors, sign and symptoms, uh, the various disease, uh, the various uh, treatment options available, the non-pharmacological management of the uh, diabetes as well as pharmacological management of the diabetes. So uh, this is it. If you have any questions, please ask.